Hi, I'm Emily Wu, and today I'm going to talk about immunoprecipitation and immunoblotting. First, immunoprecipitation is a method to isolate specific proteins that are then identified with Western blots or immunoblotting. Um, Western blots or immunoblotting is a method to separate and identify proteins and protein modifications in a mix of other proteins. There are two approaches to immunoprecipitation. They include the pre-immobilized antibody and the free antibody approach. Um, there are also two commonly used types. These include chromatin immunoprecipitation, which is performed to help identify DNA binding proteins. So some examples are transcription factors and histones. Another type is RNA immunoprecipitation, or RAP, which precipitates RNA binding proteins. Immunoblotting, or Western blotting, um, is commonly used in clinical diagnostics. These include HIV tests, and the World Anti-Doping Agency also uses it to test for erythropoietin use in athletes. Both of these methods are commonly used in research because they are specific, low cost, and easy to use. So in terms of general usage, um, as I said before, immunoprecipitation has two approaches. In the pre-immobilized antibody approach, an antibody is first immobilized to a beaded support. So these can include agarose beads or magnetic beads. Then multiple incubation steps are performed. For each step, first the solution is added to the beads, which are then mixed and incubated together. Then the beads are pelleted to the bottom of the tube by centrifugation, so the solution can be removed using a pipette. So during this incubation, the protein will bind to the antibody, which is already bound to the beads. And then later on, the whole um, com immunocomplex is eluded out. Um, in the free antibody approach, the antibody first binds to the protein and then binds to the beaded support. And later on, there are the whole amino complex is eluded out and will be used in the Western blot. In the Western blot, there are five steps. The first step is gel electrophoresis to se separate proteins by size. Um, in the second step, these separated proteins are transferred to a second membrane where a primary antibody will first bind to the protein. Then a secondary antibody, which is labeled, will bind to the primary antibody. Um, this label should be detectable and should be correlated in the intensity of the, of the um, label should be, the signal intensity of the label should be correlated with the amount of proteins in the sample. So there are two different methods for Western blotting. Um, the direct method involves only one primary antibody, which is also labeled, which is labeled binding to the protein. The indirect detection method is much more common, and that's the one I just talked about, where the secondary antibody binds to the primary antibody. And this one has several advantages, such as um, an amplification of the signal, so it's easier to detect. So my figure came from an article, a journal article called Optimization of Immunoprecipitation Western Blot Analysis in Detecting GW182 Associated Components of GWP Bodies. So the GW182 protein is involved in messenger RNA processing and degradation. So it's pretty important, and the researchers wanted to know if antibody 4B6 and 18033 could be used to immunoprecipitate protein GW182 and detect it with Western blotting. In terms of the experimental design, first they harvested and lysed cells with the protein and got the cell extract. Then they used the pre-immobilized antibody approach of immunoprecipitation to immunoprecipitate out the proteins. And then they used SDS page to separate proteins by size. Then they transferred the proteins to a nitrocellulose membrane and performed Western blotting analysis. So in the figure, you can see a gel electrophoresis. And you can see at 182 kilodaltons, at these two dark bands, um, that's where GW182 shows up. And it shows up in the lane of 
antibody 18033 and 4B6 only. So, which is great because you can tell the other control antibodies did not de detect um, GW182. So, there's probably not much contamination in the sample. Um, one strength is that you can see antibody 18033 has only the GW182 band and one other unknown band. So it's probably um, has a pretty specific reactivity to GW182. On the other hand, 4B6 has several unknown bands, quite a few. And so it might not be as specific in reacting with just GW182, and it might have cross reactivity with other proteins. My question is, what are some other common medical tests that use immunoprecipitation or the Western blot? Um, I earlier detailed the HIV test and um, the anti-doping tests. And so any other examples would be very interesting to hear about. Thank you.